to uh, this is the regular and executive session of the City Council of Weatherford, Texas. It is 630. Uh, number one, our invocation, Dave Slaughter of Grace First Presbyterian Church. Would you please lead us in prayer? Let us pray. Grace God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for rain that replenishes the earth. We thank you for uh, cool temperatures. We thank you for uh, just the opportunity that we have to be alive on, on this earth. Lord, we just ask for wisdom and guidance in leading uh, the people that you have called to serve this city on this council. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. I'd like to call the meeting to order and announce that we do have a quorum. We're missing our Honorable Mayor, Paul Paschal. Um, tonight, our Pledge of Allegiance will be uh, led by Jeff Robinson. If you would, please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. Item number four is the canvas of the votes. Canvas of the May 1st, 2021 general election authorizing the mayor to execute the documentation of the canvas as the presiding officer of the canvassing authority and authorization to issue the certificates of election to the successful candidates for council member place number three and council member place number four. City of Weatherford council member place number three, uh, Matt Tiscus, received 590 votes for a total of 76.92%. Richard Zimmer received 177 votes for a total of 23.08%. City of Weatherford City Council member place number four, Ben Steiner received a total of 117 votes for a total of 15.04%. Kevin Cleveland received 448 votes for a total of 57.58%. Jeanette Langley received a total of 213 votes for a total of 27.38%. We will now do the oath of office. Administered oath of office to council member Place number three, Matt Tiscus. <laughs> in the name and by the authority of the state of Texas. In the name and by the authority of the state of Texas. I, Matt Tiscus, do solemnly swear. I, Matt Tiscus, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties. That I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of of the office of the city of Weatherford city or the city of Weatherford council member place number three. The city of Weatherford council member place three of the state of Texas of the state of Texas and will to the best of my ability and will to the best of my ability preserve protect and defend preserve protect and defend the constitution and laws the constitution and laws of the united states of the united states and of this state and of this state so help me god so help me god
Yay. Thank you. Next, we'll administer the oath of office to council member, place number four, Kevin Cleveland. by the authority of the state of Texas. In the name and by the authority of the state of Texas. I, Kevin Cleveland. I, Kevin Cleveland. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will faithfully execute the duties. That I will faithfully execute the duties. Of the office of. Of the office of. City of Weatherford. City of Weatherford. Council member place number four. Council member place number four. Of the state of Texas. Of the state of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. We're going to take a short recess and come back in a few minutes. Um, we'll resume now. Item number six is items of community interest. Uh, a few things to report to that, Mayor Pro Tem. So we'll have movies in the park, uh, weather permitting this Friday. That starts at 7 o'clock, and that'll be uh, Harris Park Amphitheater, and that'll be uh, Wonder Woman, the 1984 version is what's written on here. So uh, <laughs> we'll also have, uh, next week we'll have uh, the food truck night again at Heritage Park, and that'll be Tuesday from 6 to 9. We'll also have another coffee, coffee with a Cop event, and so we'll be able to host that at Ironworks uh, next Thursday from 7 to 9, and that'll actually be where you can use one of the new park ruts out there that, that have been installed. And then big event next Thursday night, too, that the college is hosting, and that's the Taste of Parker County at Heritage Park. So that's always a big event that has over 29 different local food vendors, so really cool event that next Thursday night. So, Awesome. Does anyone else have anything? Next on our agenda is consent agenda items. Items 7A through 7H. Is there anything that anyone wishes to pull? Can we Good. see those as a body as a whole? Yes. I have a motion from Jeff Robinson and a second from Kevin Cleveland. If you would vote on your screens now. That passes unanimously. Um, next on our agenda is regular agenda items. 
Item 8A, consider authorizing the city manager to execute a professional services agreement with Kimley Horn Associates, Inc. for professional engineering services for the Weatherford Bypass Project, Phase 1, in the amount of $1,780,000. Mr. Hughes? Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, Terry Hughes, Director of Capital Project. Information concerning the selection process for Kimberly Horn and a copy of the agreement was included in your agenda package. The agreement before you tonight that we're asking you to approve is for $1,780,000, includes the services needed, professional services needed to take this project through to 100% design, text dot approval, and if, and if we decide to use it, bid phase services. Now, you may have noticed as you went through the project or through the agreement that it seemed to be twofold in nature. I want to explain that to you. The main agreement is for $1,585,000 and includes base services developed around delivering a final design using an environmental document known as a categorical exclusion to a or a CE as we call them. To accomplish the CE, we will ask our, our consultant will be requesting certain design exceptions from TxDOT that should allow us to use the CE document. <laughs> Using the CE document gives us a little faster time frame of about 12 to 15 months as opposed to a longer time frame. Now, it should be noted, and I want to note at this time, that we were talking about doing a full environmental process for the entire bypass this is just for the northern bypass. Texas Department of Transportation has broken these projects into such a way that we can only use phase one and then we'll go to phase two, which we'll explain uh, in my staff report next month. Additional services uh, uh, it are included in this uh, agreement of $195,000 in its present if, in fact, we can't use the CE and have to go to an environmental assessment or an EA, which takes longer and it requires more effort, it is included in there. We won't lose anything. We just authorize that as we move forward. So, again, $1,780,000 for, uh, for the agreement. It should be noted that NETCOG and TxDOT budget in our TIP, or the Transportation Improvement Program, was for $1,900,000. 80,000, so we have a little bit of a cushion in the event we needed to do some, some uh, changes to the, to the agreement. The project manager for Kimberly Horn is Misty Christian. She is here tonight. Uh, she's excited. Her entire staff is excited about getting started with, with this project, uh, and we already have some backlog of stuff. Mail apps we're going to be doing, they're going to be doing uh, pretty quickly. I do want to note that uh, at our next uh, staff update, you will see a little bit different timeline than what you're used to in the past, the, the older one. This one will have deliverables on it with re, uh, from our consultant, and then it will have gaps where, say we do a 30% design, we send that to TxDOT for review. We can't control their timeline. So it'll be a more dynamic type uh, of timeline as we move forward and uh, here to answer questions about the the contract or the agreement and of course misty can maybe answer con uh, questions if you have some could you explain a little more to me <clears throat> the uh, environmental assessment versus the categorical exclusion what what exactly explain that again to me so i understand kind of the, the, timeline. The, the, the categorical exclusion is a little shorter version of an environmental document it's a little less intense in its nature, still requires a, a, a time for about 12 months, maybe a little longer depending on what's there. If we have to move to a full environmental assessment, that is a much more intense, uh, if I remember, uh, subchapter F. Anyway, there's, there's some additional things we will have to do uh, if we can't accomplish the CE. We'll move to the without getting assessment. too much detail who or what decides which direction or path we take that would be texas department of transportation and they decide based on some initial information that's gathered or how does that that would be correct it would be additional information 
You're good. And so uh, the effect of that <coughs> is with the categorical exclusion, we end up going out to bid for this at the end of 22, probably starting in the beginning of 23 versus what? starting in fourth quarter of 23 construction. Correct. <coughs> That's, that's still our time frame go. But again, remember through this entire process on the timelines I had, I, I tried to put it in as large a print as I could. We don't control our destiny in some cases because we, uh, we, we have a partner that's funding the vast majority of this and because they're federal dollars included, that, that, will, that will kind of dictate the process. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. I have a motion from Kevin Cleveland and a second from Jeff Robinson. Any other question or discussion? If you would vote on your screens now. That passes unanimously. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. <coughs> Item 8B, consider adoption of ordinance 02021-26, amending Title IV, Chapter 13, Historic Preservation of the City Code of the City of Weatherford. Mr. Kepner. Uh, you have in your, in your packets a complete staff report that outlines uh, the uh, process that uh, staff has worked with the Historic Preservation Commission to update um, the preservation ordinance that you have before you uh, this evening. This began in February uh, 19th of 2020 when the meeting of the uh, Weatherford Historic Preservation Commission voted unanimously to recommend uh, application to become a certified local uh, government status. As part of that status, uh, we needed to uh, work with the state uh, and update our ordinance to meet uh, the state CLG coordinators uh, minimum requirements. Um, this, uh, these changes in our ordinance have, uh, included clarifying the purpose statement uh, of our historic preservation, um, adding missing definitions that were not in place, um, uh, adopting the Secretary of Interior standard for rehabilitation as approval criteria for certificate of compliances and appropriatenesses for uh, historic properties, um, enforcing a stay of demolition for historic resources of 60 days that we currently didn't have. Um, so it made it very difficult for us to try to preserve any properties that may have pulled a demolition permit. Um, this also provides for maintenance standards and enforcement procedures for us in regards to historic properties that uh, we currently did not have in our ordinance. Um, and it also delineates the roles of the Historic Preservation Commission, the Historic Preservation Officer, staff, and other officials as it pertains to historic preservation. Um, this then went to um, the March 3rd, 2021 uh, Historic Preservation Commission, uh, where they voted unanimously to recommend approval and adoption of the proposed uh, revised preservation ordinance that you have before you today. So I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Does anyone have any questions? Um, do we have a motion? Have a motion by Matt Tiscus and a second by Jeff Robinson. Any other discussion? If you would please vote on your screens now. That carries unanimously. Uh, next we have staff reports, 9A. FY21 second quarter financial report. Ms. Dawn <coughs> Brooks. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council. Dawn Brooks, interim finance director. Tonight, I'll be giving you a quick update on the city's finances at the end of the second quarter. General Fund has collected $21.6 million in revenues, 55% of budget, and has incurred $18.1 million in expenditures, 44% of budget, resulting in a surplus of approximately $33.5 million at the end of the second quarter. Revenues overall look strong for the fiscal year. We've collected $25.5 million, 59% of the budgeted tax revenues. 
Permanent revenue is at 110%, which includes 160 single family dwelling permits issued this fiscal year to date. Fee revenue may look a little low, but a significant portion of this revenue is related to summer programs, so that'll, you'll see an uptick in that in the next few quarters. And interest income is also a little low um, due to the historically low federal funds rate, but we still are exceeding our benchmark of the one-year Treasury bill by more than four-tenths of a percent. <laughs> Taxes, our largest revenue source, is currently at 59% of budget and all tax sources are currently trending higher than budget and higher than prior year. Property tax is at 97% collected, and sales tax is at 37% collected after recording only four months of collections. In comparison to prior year, sales tax is up 360,000, or 7%. On the expenditure side, we're tracking better than target with only 44% of our annual budget Citywide, personnel costs are at 49%, supplies at, sorry, personnel is 49%, supplies 41%, services 37%, and capital costs are at 11%, with approximately 1.2 million in capital costs that have yet to be spent for the year. A few highlights outside of the general fund, hotel tax revenues at the end of the quarter were 332,000, accounting for five months of collections. In comparison to prior year, collections are down $56,000 because of a significant hit, they, significant hit due to COVID. We are beginning to see those revenues recover and we are optimistic that they will be fully restored in the near future. Solid waste is currently has a surplus of 245,000 uh, due to a pending purchase of a um, additional truck for the solid waste fleet. In conclusion, at the end of the second quarter, city's on track with budget and in a healthy financial position. I'll answer any questions you may have. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much for that report. Next on our agenda is future agenda items. Does anyone have a future agenda item? Next is executive session. Pursuant to chapter 551, Texas government code, VTCS opens meetings law in accordance with the authority contained in section 551.071 consultation with attorney number one pending or contemplated litigation hotel convention center and number two 551087 economic development negotiations ironworks coffee at 108 Houston Street and sweet Emily's at 113 West Church Street. We are now going into executive session at 651. We are back from executive <coughs> session at 7.40. At 7.40. Um, item 12, action on executive items. To take action if necessary, pursuant to Chapter 551, Texas Government v Code, VTCS, Open Meetings Law, in accordance with the authority contained in Section 551.071, consultation with attorney, 
pending or contemplate litigation, Hotel Convention Center. Do we wish to take action on that? Yes, I would like to make a motion to authorize the city manager to file a declaratory judgment action pursuant to chapter 1205 of the Texas Government Code confirming the eligibility of the city to receive a rebate of state hotel occupancy, sales and use, and mixed beverage taxes and exemption from construction, sales and use taxes pursuant to the Texas Tax Code in connection with the construction and operation of a hotel and convention center project by the city and or an entity created by the city. To retain Winstead PC to represent the city and or an entity created by the city in connection with such declaratory judgment action. Do I have a second on that? I have a motion from Matt Tiscus and a second from Jeff Robinson. If you would please vote on your screens now. That passes unanimously. Item two, 551.087 Economic Development Negotiation, Ironworks Coffee at 108 Houston Street and Sweet Emily's at 113 West Church Street. Do I have a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we ap approve facade improvement incentive for Robert Cooper for improvements made to Ironworks Coffee and Sweet Emilia's in the amount of 13732 23 23 cents. I have a motion from Jeff Robinson, a second from Kevin Cleveland. Any other discussion? If you would vote on your screens now. Mr. Robinson, can you repeat the dollar amount? Yes, I wanted to anyway. It's $13,732.23. That carries unanimously. Item 13 on our agenda is citizens comments on non-agenda items. Do I have anyone who would like to speak? Seeing none, item 14 is adjournment. I have a motion from Jeff Robinson, a second from Kevin Cleveland. That carries unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank y'all.